Okay, so before we update our stack, let's talk about the CloudFormation update behavior. So CloudFormation update resources based on differences between what you submit and the stack's current template. So we'll look at what has changed and do the necessary updates. The method of how it does this updates depends on the property you have changed for a specific resource. And you have three kinds of changes that can happen in CloudFormation. There is an update with no interruption. That means that it doesn't disrupt the resource's operations and it doesn't change the physical ID of your resource. For example, if you are updating the IAM instance profile of an EC2 instance, this is something you can do in the console without stopping your EC2 instance, and so can you during uh, while using CloudFormation. Update with some interruption means that there will be, for example, an EC2 instance being stopped. Why? Well, if we change the instance type of our EC2 instance from a T2 micro to a T2 large, it requires it to be stopped and then restarted. So this is why it's called update with some interruption. And then we have replacement. Replacement means that you have to recreate a new resource with a new physical ID because the properties you have changed do not match with the current st uh, stack states. And so therefore, the new resource will be created, the references will be changed from other resources to the new resource, and then the old resources will be deleted. For example, if you change the availability zone of an RDS database instance, then the previous one will have to be deleted and the new one will have to be created. So we'll see more about updates and how we can maybe save some of these objects or prevent them from being replaced in future uh, lectures. So in this hands-on, we're going to update MS3 buckets. And we'll consider two types of updates. We'll consider the updates with no interruption by adding some access control. And we'll also see a replacement update by updating the name of the S3 buckets. So let's have a look to see how CloudFormation reacts in uh, both these cases. So let's go back to the documentation, and then I'm going to go to the access control property. So this one is going to add an ACL to our S3 bucket, and we can read the documentation. The value will give it is public read because we want our bucket to be publicly accessible in this example, and the type is string, and the update requires no interruption. So in this case, the S3 bucket will be remaining intact. It will just have a modification of the setting access control. So to do so, well, let's go back to our templates. And then I went to two adding access control by YAML. So we have again the resource with the same logical ID and the same type. And now under properties, we have access control public read. So we have added a key and a value as a nested object within the properties key. So now let's upload this template and see what happens. So we're going to go into CloudFormation and we click on the updates. We can uh, replace the current template and upload a template file, which is going to be number two, adding access control. Click on next. Now, because we are updating the stack, we cannot rename the stack and there's still no parameters to define, so we're good. I'm going to sc scroll down, click on next. And then we have at the very, very bottom of this page, what's called a change set. So we'll look at change sets in detail later on in this course, but we have already a first preview of it, which is going to say, hey, these are the changes that are going to happen to your CloudFormation templates, and you can preview them before applying them. So in this case, by looking at what the current template is and what the uploaded template is, we can see that there is a modify action on the logical ID my S3 buckets and the resource type as an S3 bucket, replacement false. So that means that my bucket will not be deleted. So this is a safe change for us to do. So let's update the stack. And now we are getting into update in progress. So yet again, the events that are going to happen throughout your CloudFormation stack lifecycle are all going to appear under the events tab and you will get them from the beginning of time until the end. So we are update in progress at the stack level. Then we are in update in progress at the logical ID level. And it shouldn't be long before the stack is fully updated. So my uh, update is complete for my S3 buckets. And now one more time, the update is complete for the demo S3. So now if we go back into my S3 buckets and we go to permissions, we can see that access objects can be public and we're good to go. So this is what this setting was controlling. But say we want to rename the bucket. So this name doesn't make me very happy. Maybe I want to have a specific name for my S3 buckets. So what I can do is that I can go into uh, my CloudFormation and look at this template called changingname.yaml. 
So we have added a bucket name property right here, which we can find in the documentation under here, so bucket name. And it says that, okay, uh, if you want to specify a bucket name, the update requires a replacement. So that means that our S3 bucket, this one will be deleted and a new one will be created. So in the other order, the, uh, a new one will be created and then the old one will be deleted. So here we need to just insert a new bucket name. So please make sure to have uh, some text that is going to be different than me because uh, bucket names needs to be unique within AWS. So I'm just going to uh, change this very quickly. And then I'm going to upload this template file. So let's go into my CloudFormation. I'm going to update, replace the current template, upload the template file. Let's make sure it is really customized so that I have something that's going to be different than you. So I'm just going to add some random numbers. Here we go. I'm going to upload now my file and click on changing name. So it is uploaded. I click on next, next, scroll down and next. And again, now if we look at the change set preview that is being generated, what we will see is that yet again, the S3 bucket is being modified, but this time replacement is true, which is due to the fact that the documentation let us know that if you update the bucket name property, it requires a replacement. Now this will only succeed if your S3 bucket is fully empty. So make sure that your S3, object, uh, your S3 bucket has zero objects. We will see um, how to deal with this in the later section as well, but right now make sure it is empty. And so we want to apply these change sets. So let's update the stack. And now we are in update in progress, but this update is going to be a little bit different because now if we look at the events, there is my S3 bucket that is going to create a new physical resource, okay? So this what's happening is that a new S3 bucket is going to be created. And once that S3 bucket is created, the other one that we have from right here will be deleted. So let me wait for this entire stack update to be done. The stack update is now completed. And if we look at the events, so a new resource was created. And then once the update is completed, we were in update complete cleanup in progress, which means that my previous S3 bucket was being deleted. So delete in progress, it was completed. And then finally the update was done. So what that means that if I go to my resources and click on this S3 bucket right here, we have a new physical ID with a new S3 bucket in here, as we can see, and it has the right name now that we have specified in our templates. And if I go back to this S3 bucket from before and refresh my page, as you can see, the bucket was not found because it was deleted by CloudFormation. So we've seen the behavior of updates in two cases around replacement and non-replacement. I hope you like this lecture and I will see you in the next lecture.